ఇంకా ఎక్కడ రివ్యూ రాలేదు జనాలకి హెల్ప్ చేయడం అంట ఫ్యాన్స్ ఏమంటారు డైరెక్షన్ డిఓపి బ్యాక్ గ్రౌండ్ మ్యూజిక్ ఫైట్స్ డైలాగ్స్ తారక్ అన్స్ మోహన్ లాల్ సూపర్ జై ఎన్టీఆర్ జై జై ఎన్టీఆర్ ఫ్యాన్స్ క్లియర్ అర్థం అవుతుంది జై ఎన్టీఆర్ జై జై ఎన్టీఆర్ ఎవడ అంత ఫ్యాన్స్ ఉన్నప్పుడు సినిమా ఎంత గలిగిందన్నా బాగుంది చెప్తే To enable audio control, please enter your audio pin followed by the pound or hack. Chala koncham koncham ikut. Ikut tar darshan. Inko kar wait cheyal samne. Hi everyone, this is Sam here. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, hi Sam. Hi. Okay, so you guys can hear me. How many other eight attendees? Fine, that's good. So we can go ahead and start. Okay, I'm sharing my screen. Okay. So yesterday we've seen till uh, custom sub tabs. So today let's start with uh, custom records. Okay, let's see what are custom records. So we have custom records here under customization. Sorry. Can you guys go on mute? there's some disturbance okay so let's see what are custom records so uh, custom records can be located under customization list of records and fields and record types so record types is nothing but your custom records so custom records is nothing but uh, you can create any table and you can store data in it so for example let's see a bus test record this is a custom record okay just a second uh, and we do one thing okay i'll pause the screen sharing can you guys see my screen now okay so let's continue uh okay so customize uh, custom records uh, let's see uh, one custom record so when you create a custom record you need to come here customization list records fields uh, record type and create new so uh you need to uh, enter the name and uh, yeah just first you need to enter the name of the custom record and that's a uh, that's a uh, like you have you are creating a table or in a matrix uh, you need to give give a name to it so that's the name here and then uh, if you want the name field to show up on each and every row then uh, you need to have this include name field but most of times uh, you don't want the name to be available visible on each and every row and column so most of times uh, you need to uncheck this one nil the vote okay sorry for that so you need to uncheck uh, include name and field because by default uh, uh, include name field will be checked uh, for example i'll show you by creating one record types uh, 
create new. Uh, let's create any table. So custom records are nothing but tables, uh, custom tables. Uh, where you store uh, information or data. So let's create one. Uh, test NetSuite. And uh, remove this. Let's put test NetSuite session or training. So test need, need to training and uh, we'll remove the include name field. So you first need to uh, provide the name and save. Then you'll have the custom record created. Then you, you need to start uh, creating the fields. So let's uh, create a field. First field would be like any student name. Uh, internal ID always provide internal ID. Uh, don't leave it uh, for a default internal ID. Okay, we have preform text. Okay. <coughs> or you can select any. Okay, let's give uh, some marks to any uh, our employees. <coughs> let's give them rating models. List by record, let's select employees. Employee. Okay. And save this one. Now show in list. Save. <coughs> okay, custom record already exists in the back. So student name already exists. So let's put test in front test to the name and even here let's put test test to the name okay so again uh, list by record employee store value save okay so we have one field here let's create one more field uh, rating okay let's give uh, grades to our employees uh, free from text should be fine showing list save so this is a custom record which we just created uh, the custom record name is uh, test nets with training uh, actually it's better you always give an internal id to uh, over here see we forgot to give an internal id so uh, it generated a default internal id 630 which is not good it doesn't make sense so it's better you always uh, define an internal id so i'll do change id so from 630, we'll change it to test training, save. Okay, so, uh, okay, so we created a custom record uh, with label test, let's be training, uh, we have the internal ID, uh, we remove the include name field, we don't want it. Uh, when you just practice, when, you, when your guys are practicing custom records, just uh, give include name field and see how it works. And then we created two fields in this table. Uh, one is student, the student name. Uh, we have list by record employees. So all the employees in this honeycomb instance uh, will be available in this field. And then we gave rating uh, on one more field, uh, free form text. Now let's go and create records for this. So over here, more view records. Currently, there won't be any records. See, there are no records. Let's create the record. So student name, select any student name. Let's select any should be ready. Uh, let's give a rating mm, A plus to save. So if you go to list, you can see here. So this is this is a table. So you have only one record in this table. Okay. Create new. Venkat Peram. View rating C. Save. Go to list. Create new. Okay, so I gave rating for three students. So this is custom records. Custom records is nothing but where you store your data. Uh, and it can be any data. For example, uh, there might be any, you might be importing some data from external applications. So for example, you might be importing customers or vendors or sales orders or anything. So it's it's uh, if you want to store somewhere else, like not on, not directly uh, loading them into or into the sales order or custom on the or customers or vendors. If you want to have a copy of what you are loading, you can just create a, a custom record, uh, create all the fields that you have, and you can just import the data into this custom record so that you'll have a backup copy of all the data that you are importing into uh, whatever record. So 
so this is a custom record uh, we you can even do importing import of a custom record that we'll see later on uh, under csv imports okay so and also a custom record can be attached to any transaction any customer or any item or any vendor record any anywhere you can attach uh, let's see how we attach it so we have record types uh, and we just created one uh, which is test type let's see where it is so let's use the same custom record and attach it to any record uh, do we have any records on that yes we have uh, we have the employee record on it so we can attach it to the employee record mm, where is that test okay test next returning so this is what we created so now we can attach this custom record to any record so over here we have a uh, list by record employee which is a record in itself so for example uh, we have three records on this table and these three records we have Prem, Sudhir, Venkar these are our employees right so and you have the employee record isn't it over here you, this is the record in itself the employee record so you can attach custom records to any standard record only if that standard record uh, value or uh, references exists in this fields in the fields of the custom record okay so now uh, custom records are two types like you can have a independent custom record by itself not connecting to any any records any other records just uh, uh, has some data for reference or else uh, you can have a custom record which is connected to a transaction or a customer or any standard record and uh, whenever you create a new uh, new row or new record for this custom record uh, it gets connected directly to that uh, or to say to that uh, standard uh, record or object so let's see how we connect it so let's connect this custom record to uh, we have employee here so we can connect to employee record so we have uh, we opened one employee uh, prem we applied so uh, we need to connect that custom record on this employee so how do we connect uh, we need as we can connect it as a sub tab so we need to create a new sub tab first let's create a new sub tab on the employee record uh, sub tab is here form sub tab open menu so we are giving rating right so let's name it as rating uh, entity item so it's under entity employees uh, customers and vendors come under entity so let's create here rating as a sub tab let's add it save okay now you saved it so first we need to go to the custom form and enable that sub tab as I uh, told you guys yesterday when we looked at the sub tabs creating custom sub tabs after creating the sub tab you need to come to the custom form where you want it to be enabled okay and customize this form this employee form so in the employee form we need to enable that sub tab which we just created it's taking time okay so over here okay it's enabled that's good you always need to check you never know sometimes it may not be enabled so just to make sure it's better if you double check it so this enabled good cancel so now how to get that on here see it's not available because there's no record there's nothing there's no data that's why it's not available there's not even a single field so it's not available let's do one thing so how do we connect uh, this custom record nets with tra uh, test nets with training to an employee record uh, under a specific sub tab which we just created called rating yesterday i guess someone asked me a question uh, on a custom field okay i'm getting into the custom field okay that student name somebody asked me yesterday uh, this record is record is a parent so now you get to see uh, when you'll use this record as a parent so now since we are going to connect this custom record uh, to the employee record okay and the employee record is coming from this field okay so here you select record is parent okay as soon as you select record is parent you here you can see uh, on the display there are a couple of fields added okay parent sub tab so what is parent parent is the employee record okay on the parent record which sub tab do you want this uh, custom record to be connected to let's select we, we just created one called rating right let's see the, okay rating is here let's select it and we save it now let's see let's go to employee record uh, this screen cancel it let's see if it gets connected okay see your employee record rating is connected let's open it and you should be able to see that see a minus is rating given okay 
and similarly uh, we do have some other custom records too uh, view records uh, we have Sudhir Reddy and Venkapuram let's see at Sudhir's record if you open Sudhir's record see under this rating and you have a plus rating so it's here so now the connection has been made between the custom record and the standard record now there are two ways of creating this uh, new custom record if you want to create a new custom record you can just simply go here create new okay or else uh, you can come to any employee okay for example currently we have this for Sudhir uh, let's see search any other name let's search my record and this one uh, okay we have rating here edit oh not edit actually it's not required uh, cancel you can just get into rating under rating you can say here new NetSuite training uh, test tra training okay you click on this it opens you can give a rating okay and you save so you went to the employee record and you created the custom record from here now you go back to the custom record see over here there are three now you refresh it you will see the fourth one which I just created See here, Sam David uh, rating D, you got it. So there are two ways, you can create directly from the custom record or you can go to any employee record or, or I mean the source, the parent uh, standard record and you can just create from there within that. So the custom record is connected to a standard record as a sub list. Okay, you can even have a custom record by itself not connecting to anything, okay. And don't forget you can even do CSV import of this custom record. And what are CSV imports? We'll get to know uh, later on in, uh, when we look at CSV imports. So these are about custom records. Uh, if you guys have any uh, doubts about regarding custom records, uh, feel free to uh, uh, shoot an email to me and I'll uh, explain you guys in detail or uh, clarify your doubts. So we're done with custom records. Now let's look at PDF layouts. So what are PDF layouts? Okay. Uh, every company uh, we have they do business uh, with customers right and that is the order to cash process so uh, in order to cash process sales order it's not necessary we send a uh, sales order data to customer but invoice yes we do send invoice data to the customer because we are invoicing him hey this is what you need to pay uh, for the items that you want and then that and then customer gives uh, makes payment to the company so we are going to send him the invoice data so how are we going to send the invoice data uh, sales invoices list so we have an invoice form so from the invoice form how are we, how are we going to send uh, some uh, like few particular particulars about this invoice to the customer we don't want to send complete this we don't want to send a screenshot of this and, and <laughs> give it to the customer that doesn't make sense so what every company does is they print this invoice uh, how do they print on the invoice look here there's a print button so they print so when they click on print uh, there's a print layout that appears and this print layout will be they take a print of this and send it to the customer or uh, save this pdf layout as pdf attachment and send it uh, via email so it's up to the company how they send it but they send only this they never send the invoice screenshot or data or fear or uh, but they don't share this information all the information on invoice they just only provide them few details from the invoice not on invoice sometimes uh, they do even send item fulfillment details or purchase order details or uh, bill details so on each each uh, form or each record you have that uh, print button over here and that print button uh, we customize it uh, we customize this uh, print page whatever data we want we just set that and that will be sent to the customer so this is PDF layout and this will be customized so how will it be customized let's see so invoice uh, let's go to customize form so which layout are we attaching to this invoice that we'll get to see on the custom form record so over here you can see print template okay so it's HM invoice form is a template that we are using. So where we can where can we see all these PDF layouts? Customization. Let's close all this employee thing. Okay. Customization forms transaction form PDF layouts. 
So this invoice is using HM invoice form uh, print layout. Let's see HM invoice form in final view. Controller. I doubt if Honeycomb is using PDF layouts. HM invoice form. Let's copy them. Oh, just using standard templates. Okay. It's not using PDF templates. Hmm. Okay. It's a invoice form. I don't think we have that. Okay. Let's see this. Invoice. User invoice. Your transaction. Custom transaction. Your barcode. Okay. So we don't have uh, invoice using PDF layout. Uh, maybe it's just a training account. That's why uh, it's not using. Or oh, else this is created by one of our guys. Okay, so what happens is we don't have that scenario here, but I'll try to explain you guys. So uh, in your real project, real company, real client location within NetSuite for each and every transaction form, not each and every, only those transaction forms where we need to send the print layout to customers. We'll have this print button. Uh, and then when you click the print button, you'll have the print layout. So how do you customize the print layout uh, on the customize or customize form? When you come to the invoice or get into customized form using customization forms, transaction forms. Uh, on this, you'll have the print template or all this. Okay, is it basic? Yeah, see, it's it's actually basic. Under basic, you have this. Okay, advanced is something that's you are completely coding. Nobody uses advanced unless it's a huge, huge company. Uh, mostly, most of the clients they just use basic. Nobody will make hundred percent use of NetSuite. So okay so when you look at this uh you need to have this pdf layout okay uh, this is uh, this is what generates the pdf the print form of the transaction so over here you'll see which layout is being used okay you can see a classic aging invoice layout is being used uh, let's go to classic aging invoice layout so where can you see all those layouts here customization forms and transaction form pdf layouts what is this? This is called uh, classic aging invoice layout. Let's see. Classic aging invoice layout. Let's type it. Invoice layout. Okay. Got it. So, over here, this would be the template that uh, invoice is using. Then you just go to customize, and over here, you can do all the customizations. So, you can have the company logo, you have uh, these are elements, okay. Company logo is an element. You can see here selected element is company logo, selected element is form title, uh, customer date, doc. So, uh, these are all standard uh, elements. You can even create a new custom element. When you click on the custom, uh, custom element, you'll have all the transaction fields. So, you can select any field. You can select account field or country field you can select any field and you can just save it okay so this is account field you can place it anywhere on the uh, layout you want and the only thing is uh, only thing we place where we select the fields are on the columns so we select what columns come over here and also sometimes uh, we have header fields over here uh, or currently there are no header fields selected here but come on this is a header field account is out of field so we can just place it oh, like this over here there's a space below customer information so you place it here and then you can create new but let me see if there's standard header fields yeah body fields got it okay it's here sorry i couldn't find okay so only place where we'll select uh, fields together is under this body fields and columns okay rest all are independent elements all uh, in by themselves so logo is by itself title is by itself so how do how do we create independent elements just create a custom element create anything okay you want accounts receivable just save it uh, save this and you have this uh, element you place it wherever you want and oh, sorry i touched this okay uh, place it wherever you want and you can give a size uh, if you can see here we have the top size okay we have the width we have the height based upon uh, this uh, scale over here and wherever you want to place it 1.75 uh, 
top anchor to you have this page bottom edge stretch and all this uh, to the left so you have all this information where you wherever you want to place you can place it accordingly okay and so these are uh, elements by itself and the elements and fields which you select together are body fields and column fields and where do you select this again you come back onto this custom form you can see printing fields over here okay under printing fields under body over here you select all the body fields body fields are nothing but uh, the transaction body fields on the transactions so whichever ones you want on the print layout you select it and you can even give the width like what size you want to have it have the field for and then columns go on columns okay these are the column fields we have so you can select whichever column fields you want to show and also the width you can it's it's just optional if you want you can do the width or else not so mostly you will have to select body and custom fields and header and footer sometimes you may so where where is the footer fields go so footer fields go on the bottom over here over here under total or uh, below the columns all the foot, uh, footer fields go and what are the footer fields available currently in the coupon code promotion transaction discount and all that let's see if there's a footer for a footer fields no i don't see a foot of fields available so it's not selected now then you can create a custom you can create a custom element with foot of fields and header fields what do we have here company logo see we have company logo already selected over here company logo is already here this element is already present in canva okay there's company address there's invoice number there's page one uh, the paging this date Again, invoice number is bill to ship to. See here, bill to ship to. So, which means even this uh, independent elements, the standard elements, they are selected. This bill to and ship to are they are selected on this form. So, all the independent elements they can be selected under header and footer, or else they can even be uh, selected by creating here. Add custom element, you can just create them, or else you can. Just select them here on the header and footer, they will appear here. Then you can place them wherever you want. And then uh, body fields and custom column fields, uh, the, those are the important fields that you send to your customer. That's what the customer wants to see on invoice. So those fields uh, you select over here under printing fields, under body, and under column, you select all the fields. Let's save this and see. Okay, save it. Now I'll go to the invoice. I'll take a printout because it was uh, template before. Now we have the layout. Let's see whether it showed up. See, we got the bill too, we got the ship too, we got the logo, invoice, everything. So these are the fields. Let's try to you know, do something. Uh, let's put the description in front, okay? And then let's remove this invent or, or let's, let's remove these units. Quantities are already there. Why do you want units? Let's remove units and let's pull description to the front. And over here, these are the body fields. Body fields, uh, let's remove the terms. And uh, let's bring uh, the PO number to, uh, to the beginning. Okay. All is the phone number, customer phone number to the beginning. Remove terms, uh, remove units and bring description to the front. Let's see. Let's try that. Okay, we go to customize, customize form. So this might be your requirement. This is what... Uh, your user, business user might, might ask you, hey, change this one, uh, make these changes on the layout. Then you need to customize this, come to printing fields, um, body. So we thought we want to remove net terms, Let, let's remove the terms. And we thought of bringing the customer phone number to the front, okay, customer phone number, let's bring it to the front, okay, now it's in the front. And then columns, we thought of removing uh, units because quantity is already there. And then the description should be at the top. Let's get this at the top, okay? Now let's save this. And again, go back to the invoice. Let's close this uh, print layout. Okay, now we'll open the print layout. Let's see if changes have been done. Okay, your customer phone number is here. Terms are gone. Uh, your description is on the front. Uh, the, uh, the units are gone. So this is how you customize the layout, okay? PDF layout. Even have barcode over here. Yeah, mostly if you can uh, 
place all the information within one page it's good but if you uh, if the customer wants a lot of information and you exceed the pages then it becomes messy it's hard to handle them it's hard to customize if it goes beyond uh, one two three pages so this is about uh, pdf layouts so once again let's uh, do a quick recap of what are pdf layouts so on the transactions whenever our company wants to send information to customer or vendor on the transaction we do a print we have print button where we uh, select only uh, we set only few uh, information that we want the customer to see so how do you set that on the print layout uh, on the customize of the form we select a pdf template and on the pdf template uh, we do all the customization okay we are over here on the basic pdf layout we select a template and on that template uh, you do all the changes even without going to template you can do changes like for example as you just did the uh, your user asks to change something like remove this field move these fields then it's fine then you can just uh, create it uh, make those changes from the form itself come here go to printing fields under body and columns make all those changes so you can't make this body and columns changes from the layout you can't do this only rest all you can do like changing the size you come here you can do uh, you want to add a new element you can just click on custom add custom element and you can do you can even put color over here you can add color you see just fill color all that but yeah it's it's for the entire layout it's not for each element it's for the entire layout you have colors set okay so this is about the pdf layouts this is how a pdf layout looks and this is what any company will send to the customer this is what the customer sees and all the information we store is within our net suite as a transaction such as this one so this is about custom pdf layouts next let's look at saved searches okay or uh, what are saved searches so uh, it's like writing a query uh, some of you might have worked on uh, sql and uh, where you write sql statements and using your criteria and what all fields you want to see you write the sql statement and you get the results uh, that is within any database but over here like you have all transactions you have customer records you have everything all these forms all these records you have so you want some data like you want to pull out okay i want to see invoices that all that are created uh, since february of this year so you have that criteria or your users user asks you hey uh, get me a report uh, where i want to see all the uh, employees uh, employee records that were created this year so how do you create that so you need to create a save search over here reports new search okay and now uh, and what do you want to create the search uh, let's look at the employee uh, employees employee records that are created this year let's go to employee okay so we are going to create a search on employee record and never use this if it's a small minor thing then you can use this but most of the times it's better you do create save search so you this is a create save search field this is from where you create all the save searches okay the first uh, first you need to give it provide a name a unique name Employee search. Uh, we'll do NS training, and then internal ID. It's up to you guys if you want to give give it or not. But remember, save searches can be accessed by scripts. So if you are building a save search that will be accessed by a script, I would suggest uh, provide an internal ID. And then. Public option. If you want the save search to be uh, visible only to you, then don't click on public. If you want the save search to be seen by everybody, to be accessed by everybody, then click on public. And then uh, get into this criteria. Uh, you provide all your filters, all your uh, conditions. So what is your condition? We need all uh, employees that are created this uh, this year. Okay. Uh, what field uh, might give us that information? Do we have created date created? Okay, we have this date created uh, within. Okay, uh, do you have anything for the year? Uh, here we have, yeah, we have the year. Okay, 
to to have this year previous year this fiscal year very good this fiscal year okay so it starts okay from first jan 2016 to december 31st 2016 set okay so dead credit is within this fiscal year this is our criteria and then what do you want to see in the results so under results tab you have all the fields so name okay fine email phone number so you can select whatever fields you want to see from the customer records and then there's sort by okay sort by name no you can do sort by created date that would be easier so if you normally it's by default ascending order if you want descending order you can always click on here so let's save this save and run save and run okay it gives us all the details so 80 employee records has been created this year and did we set did create it as a field as a result field no we didn't so let's select that edit the search on the results i want to see the date created over here set a field okay date created okay so you can just even move the fields move up move down okay move completely up move completely down you can remove the field you can insert a field in between the fields you can cancel or click ok and you can even at the last line you can create a new field any, any new field okay now let's save and run this date creator should be shorter let's see okay date created see it started from april 21 web wizard well, what a name okay and then may you can see here scroll down may it's all in the ascending order may june july okay okay there are more than 80 records oh it's actually total 80 but uh there are not in one single page okay there are two pages divided into two pages okay over here you can see june july this was when all the okay now similar it is the first user to access this instance okay then you have ram krishna sachin driving okay these guys are getting natural training but because they are retired okay okay so this is how you create a safe search and this is a basic safe search which i just created but you might be creating a lot of complex saves such as like adding more and more uh, filters uh, you also have expressions over here you can select expressions and in that case you can use your and and or statements over here you can see and and or and you can use your parentheses for and and or when you use those search like that and results in the under results uh, it can be complex you can make it complex like you you select any field you can put a custom label okay so on the results only this label will be available not this label and then okay you can do summary type group by so for example uh, what do you mean by group by so on a particular journal entry you'll have multiple lines so you don't want each and every line each and, uh, you, if there are 10 lines on a journal entry you don't want 10 results showing up in the save search if you want only one just then just group by group by the je number j name uh, by the summary type you have function uh, you have these functions available in save such as and then you can have formula so if it's a formula field you can create a formula field let's do insert uh, you want to create a formula field over here you have formulas okay formula field okay numeric formula field and you put a formula and over here you click on this you can select the field and you can do the formula like you can do total is there total subtotal or okay is there amount additional amount yeah you know any field that has a home form you select it and you can do all this see these are all the functions available ascii and all this if you want to know about each each and every one of this you can just google it you get to know about all those next day you can select a date and you can see this next day function too next day you can select a date field and do the next day that's what will be said there in this uh, field so that's how you can make it complex and then you don't use highlighting available filters or audience if you want you can 
okay which uh, role should be viewing this save search and which employees you can select from here and the roles for if you want any role particular only particular role to be accessing this save search you can select that role here email if you want email if you want if you want to send the results to somebody as an email you can do, even do that under this email tab you can select the recipient when do you want to send you can do all that send email alerts when records are created or updated send emails according to schedule you can put a schedule like okay run this save search uh, at this point of time every day and send the results to this person you can do that but you can't send uh, to somebody outside next week like you can send only to person who has account in this uh, see over here if you go to recipients you have the list this is all your customers all your employees and all that so you can send only to those email IDs that are present in this network so that's under email so you guys try all this but I'll give an assignment to all this then you'll get to know you'll have audit trails so who created this you see all that execution log these are the when was it run by search title transfer from it this uh, nobody you will never use it okay and one more thing uh, when you have a save search okay what is this why is it showing you? okay we grouped it right so that's fine okay let's move the group remove this okay save and run so save such results what can you do with the results you can export it over here you have options csv excel and pdf so whenever you use a user asks you some data like give me data give me a list of invoices that were created this year or created from this time to that time like this day to a particular day so you run a save search with your filters and your criteria what all fields you want to give it to the user you run the save search you'll have the results and you export the results to excel or csv and just send that file to that user in an email that's it so save create a save search uh, run it uh, you have results you can export the results and send it to the user whoever asked for it so that's about save searches and there is something called reports what are reports so you won't be creating any reports good thing about this so save searches business users might create or they may ask you to create or for any particular functionality or customization you might you yourself might think okay we need a save search and you might create a save search access it from script if required or not but reports you'll never create a report that's for sure uh, business users they'll create all the reports they never ask you to create a report if they're asking you to create a report it's not a report it's a save search that they want okay so what are reports what are those that we will not create but only the business will create so come to reports uh, reports saved reports let's see the saved reports so see these are all the reports created by business users 12 month item sales how does it look like let's open one let's open pos view if you do view uh, you'll come into the report results so these are the report results let's go to customers so you'll get to know how they created this okay so they gave a name uh, this is the table they created uh, how did they create they just added the fields they, how did they add they just went here uh, search for the fields and they just clicked on it now let's see over here you have a con name double sector or select on it and see the amount uh, column appears so that's how they selected all the fields all the I mean all the columns and for on each about each column you have some details over here click on account you have column label account exchange unit price you have some information about it due date current day. so this is how they select the columns of fields and then filter okay they have the filters here similar to save such as even they provide some filters like criteria okay they have this criteria for this particular report saying okay uh, the components open PO that is a name I guess okay uh, then they have the date okay date uh, should be range between today to this date they have order status it should be equal to open they have substory it should be only this substory and then they have sorting tool what so what they have okay they're sorting by date as we did right we sorted by the create date creator same thing they're doing by date it's ascending it's not descending because they haven't selected the descending option and more options what else 
okay these are more options okay audience okay all those additional things on the sales side same things are here so audience you have access you have audit trail on the nationality he has updated something from this uh, report and then who is the owner of this report miles gray that's the person who created this report and there are some additional options so this is how they create a report and trust me you will not create a report uh, what you might be asked is uh, just to make additions additions in the sense add a filter or you can you can come here add a filter by using add or they might say hey add more uh, columns so you might come here you might select the field double click it so it can it appears here uh, or else they might say hey i'm unable to find a field then you might come here you might uh, try finding that field or they might say hey there are two fields i don't know which one to select they might ask you if they're dumb enough they'll ask that question if they are smart enough they can figure it out and i'll let you know how to figure it out if there are two fields with the same name uh, let's open this let's see if we can find any two fields with same name mm, i doubt we can yeah, no. okay let's do this search fields date creative okay see there are two fields good so when the two fields with same name uh, someone who is new to NetSuite and creating reports and they're from business they're not from IT okay so they might be confused oh which one should I select if they're smart enough it's very simple when they click or when they hover on this they just put the cursor on it if they look at the help here you can see where about the uh, field source okay I put the cursor on the first date creator it says open purchase orders date creator so it's on the open purchase orders I go to second one and this says open purchase orders item date created so it's the item date created of the item when is the item record created so this date created is of the item not the PO itself this one is direct the PO itself so that's how you can know about it it, it has extra line this is the date the item record was created it's not the PO date created date so that's how you get to know or you can distinguish between uh, two fields that have same name okay so you may be asked to do that or add a field or add a field that's it nothing else you will be asked nothing else because reports are created by business users not us and they have a lot of options to create uh, reports not only they go to new report and create they can create uh, they have some pre-built uh, types like financial reports see these are all financial they can create a financial income statement report balance sheet report under banking, they can create a banking register report, employees, their employee change history report, time, billables, purchase, and all that. These are all the pre built uh, different types where they can create reports from. And don't worry, it will never work. For example, if uh, they created some particular report, uh, some financial report, they created some financial income report or uh, financial uh, any report, uh, if, and they have some problem issue with that report they'll give you the report name and it's it's not required that you come here you look at each and every tab and find the report name just click on uh, for the reports you need to do this page what's the name of this open open POS see you can see open POS so to find a report just click on page column and give the name of it open POS and from here you can get into it just click on it it will show you the results then do customize it will come on to the customize page that's how you can find because sometimes the report you may not find it under saved reports so you, know, you might uh, get worried like hey there is a report but it's not on the saved reports where the hell it is so it might be somewhere in here in some other type report type it might be there so instead of wasting our time by going into each and everything just go here click type page column and give the name of the report but yeah you need to get the report name from the user and then you can work on it so this is about reports and those are the changes you'll be asked to do okay we still have 10 more minutes so let's see what are csv imports okay csv import is nothing but an automated process of importing data from external source into NetSuite. You can import customers, employees, vendors, those entities, right? Okay. You can import transactions, sales orders, opportunities, POs, anything 
anything you can import and even uh, custom records that you are creating you can import so most of the things within netsuite you can import you can't import a save search or report okay those things are uh, you can't import all those they are not they're too complex to be imported so they need to be created manually okay so let's see where is this option under setup under import export it says import export but it's mostly export not import so over here oh sorry it's it's mostly import not export okay so you go here you do import csv records so you should have a csv file uh, you should have a csv file where you okay let's start to create one or let's let's export one and then make some changes and do the okay then make it done faster lists employees we have employees it's better to create a save search and get some make them it's okay you can do this okay we have all the employees see even without creating save search you go to list of employees even here you can uh, export it let's and csv is the best option because importing you can do only csv imports you can't do excel imports okay i'm exporting this so i have this and if i want to change something okay let's change on zahira bar 666 uh, let's give some other email id like uh, smart guy at gmail okay that's one change supervisor we have okay and let me and what else can we change login access let's remove his access zahir if you're on the call don't worry i'll change it back so and if you want to change any other you can change whom shall we change oh, i won't change mine okay well, let's change rakesh i doubt if rakesh is on the call or not i got to know he's go he's gone for a movie today okay let's change his email id too rakesh b oh just a second if i change email ids they may not be able to log in <laughs> okay let me go back okay even i won't change zahir okay i'll put a name number to zahir then okay i'll give any phone number five five one two 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 five two any number any ten digit okay i just gave a ten digit number to zahir and okay it's in this format it can be any, any format no problem okay we gave phone number to zahir okay let's remove his login access he won't mind he's been giving back and narsimha okay i guess narsimha gone for a movie so we can remove his access too okay so we removed narsimha's access and uh, we gave uh, phone number to zahir and login actually all other records are not required let's remove those we don't need all those delete this time but remember the important field for importing when you do csv import the important field is the internal id so that's how the csv import uh, identifies that record and accesses it okay now we have this there's nothing right okay so we are updating these two uh, it's not only update you can do create or update okay uh, so we are going to update that's our csv import uh, example that we are going to see today in the next eight minutes so we are going to update these two records we have internal ids that's what we need and what are we updating uh, phone number and uh, login access so all of the fields if you want you can have it or else you can remove it uh, anyways it's the mapping that we decide which fields to be used in the csv import so let's save this one employees 693 okay uh, okay no problem save it as employees 693 i saved it okay i'll go to desktop i will save it yes okay so now let's go back to our import assistant so what we want to do we want okay let's open this employee records zahir there's no phone number uh, where's nothing now okay so you so Narsima, what we were, we were able to remove the access. Oh, where is that access? Maybe this one. Give access. Okay. Employee Zahir. Okay. Where is his phone number? He doesn't have a phone number. Okay. We are going to give him a phone number. Uh, import assistance. Okay. Over here. We want to update two customer, two employee records, right? 
Okay, on the first page of CSV import, you want to select what you want to import. Uh, this is an employee. So employees are here. Okay, good. Employees. The code type is employees. Okay, leave these two as it is. Uh, CSV. Okay, select the file. Go to desktop. And where is it? Uh, see on the desktop. Okay, it's here. Employee 690. Open. Okay, and then go next. Okay, we are not adding, we are updating it. So let's update. Under advanced options, you'll have the queues. Okay, it looks like these guys don't have any more queues, so they have only one key. Don't take any. Next, it's updating. Next, uh, these are we don't need all, the, all these fields. Let's remove job title, supervisor, subcherry. Okay, phone we need, uh, location, internet is the key, main thing we need that. Okay, all this third stage for email. Okay, so internal ID. See internal ID over here on the employee. You see this external ID is the key, and even on internal ID you'll have a key over here. Internal ID is the key. So you need to have the key field for sure. That's how you defer that record. I mean the CC import report will refer to that record and access it. So internal ID or external ID, either of those you need to give, provide when you are doing a CSV import. Okay, so over here we have the internal ID. Coming from here, this is here, and this is coming from the employee record. Uh, phone we're getting from the CSV, and this is phone on the employee record. So go next. Uh, it's a test. You provide any name. We're testing it. Test training, and then save and run. And you go to import job status. Now uh, where is it? Can you see that? Refresh. Okay, so here employees employees good good uh, Completed two of two records imported successfully if if something fails you can look at the CSV response And you'll get to know what failed and what is the reason for the failure. Okay, so here it says these two records operator are imported successfully Let's check it. Let's go to Zahir. Okay, our phone will refresh it and see where the phone Okay, the phone is imported. That's good and then access did access. Work? Oh, we didn't do the access fine. Okay, no problem so that's how you do imports like you updated this you can even create like what all fields are required you can create a csv file with all those fields and the records and just import when you import you select the create option and you map the fields from the file to the fields on the record that's it and run the csv import so that's about csv imports so we're almost done uh, almost 90 percent done on the admin side so from tomorrow we'll see the rest topics uh, which will be done in a couple of uh, classes the admin part and then next week we can start the developer part so that's it for today guys uh, i'm recording each and every section, uh, session so uh, i'll provide you guys all the recordings uh, sometime uh, before we finish our complete training so that you'll have a uh, referral point Okay, guys, thanks a lot. Uh, see you all tomorrow. Have a good night. See you guys. Bye. Yeah.